Hi, um, Annalena uh, doing another video. Um, uh, I'm in the midst of cleaning the house uh, and you will know later in this video why I told you that. Right, so uh, I am not quite sure where this uh, talk is going to take me, but I have a rather funny feeling about it. Um, so I'll just go with the flow and whatever is supposed to come will come and I'll just trust that and um, I want to talk about fairy tales, fairy tales, uh, mostly the classical fairy tales uh, and because um, fairy tales they shape us, they shape the collective consciousness um, so here we go and uh, I'm not updated my children are grown up now so I'm not updated on everything which is coming of new fairy tales but um, so I'll just by memory and the way I remember them I'll go into some of the fairy tales that uh, I grew up with and I have to say that I love with all my heart. I do. But nevertheless, I'm going to take a closer look at them. So, start by Cinderella. Right. What do we have there? We, we have a beautiful girl. A beautiful girl. Her soul is pure. She's very unlucky. So she ends up living with this evil stepmoms, the evil stepmom and her sisters. So what do we have? We have um, jealousy uh, and we have uh, um, control. They want to control this beautiful girl by so that she's doing all the housework. She's doing all the housework, all the housework and uh, she's doing it, but her soul is pure, so she will just keep doing it. After all, she's got the animals that she's very closely connected to, and um, they'll cheer her up. But still, she'll sit there, she'll accept her fate, and yes, dreaming about the day that she will get out of there, and um, someday this magical fairy shows up and this changes her life and she goes to the ball and she meets the prince but oh dear she has to run away because he must not see who she really is because she's just a dirty little girl she's she's cleaning and cleaning uh, and um, she's nobody she's nobody so she has to run away but the prince cannot forget her so he will go looking for her everywhere and um, but she's being held down by evil forces, and um, of course the other women. Oh dear, do we have some comparison here? Women, women, wake up, wake up! This is part of our collective consciousness, and the way that we have been comparing ourselves to each other. Yeah. So, luckily. Luckily, the animals help Cinderella so that the prince will find her, she'll find the woman, and the shoe will fit. And so she's saved. She's being saved from this horrible life that she's living. So, <laughs> Cinderella, Cinderella, Cinderella. Right, going into that one. Uh, doing housework. All oh, right. If you tap into that collective consciousness and that's what you're coming from. Oh yeah, but I'm doing all this housework because I'm a, I'm a pure soul and, and nobody else is doing it. And da-da-da-da-da, I can sign that one. Um, and um, someday somebody will come and save me. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> right. And 
also take a look at where does it leave men? Where does it leave our men? Gee, okay, uh, I'm going to show up for this woman and I'm going to dance with her and, 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 and I'll come and, 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 and fix her and, and, and she'll be happy. It's very easy. Very, very easy. <laughs> so next, next uh, fairy tale, classical fairy tale. I, and I love them. I have to say, it. I love them. We have Snow White. Again, what do we have? Comparison. Comparison is part of our collective consciousness. And we have to wake up to what this is doing to us, what this has done to us for centuries, for, for forever, for ever since we came into this came onto this planet so snow white uh, she's so beautiful that uh, this evil uh, queen is ready to kill her because she's now she's more beautiful than her oh dear so um, this hunter the way i remember it she, he saves her in his own way. He was given the task of killing her, but she, he saves her so that she can run through the woods um, in the darkness, getting lost, getting really, really scared. You're so scared because you're in the darkness. And where can you find the way? And everywhere there are these wild creatures. But again, she's a pure soul. So she finds this house and she walks into the house and she's still real scared and and she wonders and she comes into the, this house and there and she realizes children there are children living there but she's really tired so she falls to sleep and then the seven dwarfs come home and finds her and they could see that somebody has been um, there and then they, they find her and and it's very funny. Is very funny and sweet, but to go take a deeper look at it, what happens? These seven little men are like children. Where does it leave our men? They need this sweet and tender and gentle, pure soul to come and clean for them, to come and wash them, to come and cook for them and to raise them in her gentle way. It's all part of our collective consciousness. This has shaped us. <laughs> so, but of course, this evil queen, she finds out that she's still not the most beautiful woman in this country. And uh, so, <laughs> so she, creates this mixture because she wants, uh, she's, she's, she's going to get her, she's going to kill her, so, and she finds her, and she's um, dressed up uh, like an old lady, and she's uh, giving her the apple, this beautiful red apple, and uh, so what do we have? We have temptation. Oh, we're tempted. Mm. 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 So, and what happens is that that uh, she, they believe she dies, and they put her in this coffin of glass. And of course, the the, the dwarves they understand it. They come running. They come running once they realize how bad it is and they want to save her. So Sleeping Beauty, she goes, no, sorry, sorry, uh, Snow White um, is in the coffin. And we all know the end of that story. Um, the prince, the prince comes along and he gives her a kiss and then she wakes up. And she goes to live the life of her dreams, 
with her prince. So again, she's dead. In fact, she's sleeping dead. And a man has to come and save her. Right, we see the same pattern, it's the same pattern. I don't think we should sit and wait for a man to come and save us any longer. <laughs> Where does it leave the men? Hey, I'm, I kissed my woman and she's still acting out. What's wrong with her? You know? <laughs> so, and uh, then we have uh, <coughs> Sleeping Beauty. Sleeping Beauty. You know, the same, the same pattern. She slept for a hundred years because evil things happened to her. And uh, madness, anger, this, uh, this fairy. Uh, and the way I remember it, is, it was the fairy number 13 who was not invited to the party. But I know there are different versions of these classical fairy tale stories. <laughs> so anyway, anger uh, to the point where you're ready to kill, uh, to revenge, revenge. Ooh. So, um, so you're ready to kill an innocent and pure soul, and she actually goes to sleep, uh, and the whole castle goes to sleep, and. Um, um, until the son of a king, a prince, obviously, and we know the end of that story, he wakes her up by a kiss. <laughs> Another magical kiss. <laughs> so, we, we, you, so part of our collective consciousness is that part where you want to be rescued. You want to be rescued. <laughs> you want somebody to come and... You know, look after little you, give you a kiss. <laughs> um, <clears throat> also, you know, what are these stories giving to our men? How are we shaped by them? Can we love them and, and still see them for what they are? Uh, Pinocchio. Pinocchio, we all love Pinocchio. What does he want? He wants to become a real, is it boy or man? He wants to become a real human being. Because he's like dependent upon, you know, he's just a doll and whoever pulls a string, he needs to follow that string. So ain't no fun, ain't no fun. So what happens when he lies? His nose will grow long. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And oh boy, the trials that he has to go through in order to become a real human being. I call him a human being. He, he literally has to die before becoming. Where does it leave our men? Is that the kind of trials they had to go through? In life? Hmm? Wow. I'm just questioning. I'm just questioning. I don't have the answer. I don't have the answer. I'm just pointing out that there's a connection to the way that fairy tale stories shape us. Now, since I have written a fairy tale story myself, I'll have to take a look at that one as well. And when uh, you write like that, uh, it comes from source. So I'm not really conscious about, th you know, the themes. It, it just comes. And and um, that's why, you know, an, an, an author needs somebody else to take a look at <laughs> what you wrote. You know, they, oh, did I really write that? Was that my theme? Oh. Oh, is that's what at stake anyway? So about you know women doing all the work, doing all the work around the house and everything. 
Um, I can see. I actually, um, I, I bought into that a little bit because Troll Mum in that story, she's cooking the breakfast while Troll Dad is uh, litting the fireplace. Uh, that's just a small detail, and uh, but I do also know that that um, and also among the humans, it's a very classical stereotype, typical that the woman is tired because she's <laughs> she's doing the, all the work. And um, but these tri three troll girls, they come from woods. They're totally innocent, and they they don't know much about human beings. Uh, so so they wonder. Uh, what this is all about um, and when the troll family the big troll family is gathered everybody helps out so they're not used to this and in the last uh, story of this book about the troll, troll and Nora then um, it becomes very clear how the women do all the work in the kitchen and uh, the men sit around discussing politics and the old man in the story, the, the grandfather, he he's just observing and he's laughing and at some point it gets so bad that he says, I wonder what Jesus would have said if he'd been here today because Christmas Eve, it's about Christmas Eve and, and um, obviously he came to teach us all about peace. <laughs> And uh, then one of the moms with the little child, she'll just quietly say, I think he would have said that if everybody just got off their butt and helped with everything that needs to be done, I think it would be, um, everybody would be having a great time. Something like that anyway. So as I'm talking about fairy tale stories, I just needed to take a close look at what came from me. What did I write? Right, and uh, uh, so I grew up in a very classical, uh, in a home where just basically, yeah, the women did everything around the house, and and I copied that, and uh, you know you can't blame anyone for that, but luckily I I have been uh, with with friends and in settings where everyone is equal, everyone just just um, helps out because that's what you do when you're together it, it, it's it's very balanced and um, it, it feels safe to be in in settings like that because then you you know um, I have tried that uh, but I started this video by saying that I'm in the midst of cleaning <laughs> the house today so this is still part of my original family and the pattern yeah <clears throat> so hey 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 girls let's take one step at a time <laughs> okay that was a little bit about fairy tales and uh, to everyone out there what shaped our collective consciousness uh, where does it come from yeah we're we gonna wait for that prince to come and uh, save us huh? 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 no no, no, no. Uh -uh. Bye. Take care. I love you.